Hey everybody. Oh my gosh, do you hear my kitty? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, sorry about that. While everybody gets hopping on, I'm a little bit early. Um, because I was going to try to do it landscape this time instead of portrait mode. So I'm just seeing if it makes a difference or not. And it looks like it's showing sideways on the screen. So let's flip it back around. Hi guys. Okay, it's gonna have to be this way. <laughs> okay. Hope that's all right. Can you hear my cat crying in the background? Oh my goodness. He's crazy. He's crazy. He's lonely. Well, he shouldn't be lonely. We're here all day, <laughs> right? Oh my goodness. Hey, while everybody pops on, I thought I would show you a couple of other media board techniques. So remember yesterday we did the little media board book and there were a few questions about the media board. Um, so to cut media board, if you get the really large sheets, the nine by 12 sheets, you can use a Fiskars trimmer to cut it. What you do is just cut it, you know, measure, cut on one side, flip it over, measure, cut on the other side. Voila. Now, if you measure and cut on only one side, it becomes like a score and you can fold it and make boxes and things like that. Some of you may have taken a class where we made a box and a few other things. So that's fun. This is from a class that I taught. Um, it's a retired class, but it's like a media board um, structure. So we started with three pieces of media board. One, two, three. And then we we taped them together with the old black and white tape of mine. That stuff has a strong adhesive, kind of like the white tape that's still available. And then inside the book, there are tags going different directions. So that's kind of a fun little project. Also, this was one of the first projects I ever did with the media board. It was, um, it was a CHA project, I do believe. And so it's a wall hanging and it hangs. And it ha I used Tim's, I th actually think this whole project might have been Tim's idea. <laughs> he always saves me when I have no ideas, seriously. He is such a creative genius. Um, but we used the crocodile to punch holes in the media board and layer it and then use Tim's cool little ideology jump rings to mount it all together. I had this on my doorknob for a long time and then the cats kept knocking it off, but. So you can definitely th think, you know, outside the box for the media board, which is super cool. This is a little accordion book. I always say I love to use the media board for book covers, and this is an example of that. So this is an accordion book done with, um, looks like Ranger watercolor paper. And the front cover and the back cover are just a small piece of media board that I glued onto the accordion. So you can add a ribbon, tie your book shut. I love little book projects. There's something so satisfying about making a little book and then you, know, you start with blank paper and then you walk out with a book. It's just, it's the best, seriously. So I can't remember why I made this, but it must have been for a demo or a project of some sort. <laughs> Okay, so today's demo. I was digging through bins in the studio and I came across this. Do any of you recognize this? Anybody take this class years ago? It was an acrylic technique based class that I taught um, a number of years ago. I'm trying to de decide if it was even, yeah, no, it was probably right when I first started, when I first joined Ranger. 
And I got the idea, actually, again, from Tim, because Tim used to do these tag books, technique tag books that we did at Ranger University, and I think he has some classes. So the, these, these are a different tag for tons of different acrylic techniques. So I thought it would be fun to do a couple tags today, and you could start your own little acrylic tag book and then we can um, do a few more I mean I, I probably won't go in order <laughs> attention deficit oh squirrel uh, but you know at, through as the as the self isolation isolation continues we can um, add every now and then during daily demos to a little tag book it's a really good idea anytime you learn something new from any teacher anywhere make yourself a tag you can write on the background how you did it, and then you have this great resource. So when you're stuck, like, well, what should I do? And then you're, you come here and you're like, oh, yeah, I can do a transfer with acrylic paint. That's a great idea. Um, oh, yeah, I love Scrafito. Um, this is what we're going to do today, masking three ways. So, yeah, you get the idea, yeah? Cool beans. So what I did while I was waiting for 10 o'clock to come is I took some of my white tags. These are the number 10s, I believe. I did gesso them because the two techniques that we're going to do today are gesso dependent. Or maybe we'll throw more than two in. Who knows? It depends. Um, and then I did do a little bit of spraying with gloss spray, and that has dried. So the first one that we're going to do is masking three ways. And I keep my masks like this <laughs> in a bin in the studio. I'm really, I'm organizationally challenged, you guys. I'm so bad at it. And it's so cute how sometimes I'll post things about it and people will try to fix me. You know, they'll say, oh, you should do this or you should do that. And it just makes me laugh. That's so adorable. You think you can fix me. I'm 50. I'm not, I'm not fixing myself at this point. I'm at peace with the chaos, though sometimes I wish I weren't quite so full of chaos. Should we use the kitty today? Baby kitty? All right, so that's what I'm going to use today for the masking. Also, I have another um, basket for all my chipboards. So these techniques will work with the chip because the chip is our mask as well. It looks like there's some old masks in here. A lot of the masks are retired. So if you have some of those old sets, hoard them because they are not available commercially anymore. But you know I'll keep doing more because I love masking. All right, masking three ways. So in general, regular old masking is when you have a shape. So this is a positive shape, meaning it's the it's not the outline of something. It's not, you know, this would be a negative shape here, right? This is negative shape because when you paint through it, you end up with the positive shape. This is a positive shape, and when we paint around it, we're going to end up with the negative. And you take a little bit of acrylic paint. I really do think one of the easiest ways to mask is with a mini blending tool. Brushes, of course, work good as long as your brush is dry. In a class situation, eventually nobody has a dry brush, so that ends up being a big bummer. I have a lot of brushes. I counted once. I had 182. I've since donated some of them to my class supplies, but I do have a lot of brushes because I like a dry brush. Okay, so general masking, of course. Start on the mask. Pull off. You guys have all done this a million times. But this is, again, first couple tags for your acrylic. Oh, mutant kitty. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think that's hilarious. Zombie kitty. Okay. So there's one, two. Remember, if you have low standards, you'll like everything you do. I was reading a quote on Pinterest today. It said something like, um, negativity is an enemy of creativity. And I think that's really true. Like if you guys are always really negative about what you're creating, if you don't give your space room or yourself space room to be new, room to grow, room to change, um, that negativity will stifle your creativity. I, I really do believe that. Okay. So there's the general basic masking. Okay. Now let's do reverse masking. So what we're going to do is we're going to put paint down 
And then we're gonna rub a lot of it away around the mask. So you need a baby wipe or a rag. If you don't want all of your blue paints or whatever color you start with to go bye-bye, you do kinda need to let that dry. Uh, I'm not gonna let it dry right now, just because I wanna keep going, right? We're gonna use mineral. And I'm gonna paint, you want the paint to go on pretty thick. That is a crunchy brush because I left it in the water all those days. Okay, and you must overlap. So I made a list of all these different things that I'm gonna talk to you guys about when I demo, and one of them is overlapping because if you don't overlap, it makes your, your piece looks like it doesn't belong together. It just looks like random, you know, random elements that don't have any sort of relation. Okay, so mineral paint squished all over, and now I'm gonna take a baby wipe and lightly rub away any mineral that is sticking out from the mask. So I'm rubbing the paint away is my goal here. And since we've got Demon Kitty here, I gotta do his eyes. This is actually my cat Zelda, I have three. Okay, so there's one. Now, because we put mineral down and then rubbed around it, when we pick this up, we're gonna be left with, ooh, that looks cool. I don't even know if you can see it because I almost used too light of a color. So we're gonna to switch to a darker color. Sound good? Just so you can see it better. And I'm gonna do it right over where I put that. Do it again. Just because I can tell it's not gonna show up. Okay, so now darker color will show up better. So I'm going to put the mask down. I'm going to lightly get rid of any paint that's sticking out from around the mask. Remember, you know, you're not gonna be able to get it 100% off, so think about your color. Okay, there we go. Ooh, I like it. Okay, let's do it again. So it's, it's going to be a much more imperfect version of your mask. And then as you move from um, shape to shape, your mask has a lot of paint on the back of it. Here, so what will happen is you will end up transferring color from shape to shape. In fact, if I go back to so I'm just trying to find a brush. <laughs> If I go back to the mineral, okay, now that I've got some of that lapis on the back of the kitty, if I go back to mineral, it might show up a bit better now because that lapis on the back of the kitty is going to transfer. So you're gonna get some cool effects happening. Yeah. Transferring, transferring is the best. It's one, oh yeah, can you see how you, this, I'm getting almost a ghostly image with that blue transferring. You know what would be cool is to do it with cheddar or orange or Sedona. You know why I chose Sedona? It was right here on the, <laughs> it was on my desk and I didn't have to dig. All right. So I would say this is getting pretty full, but we are going to be brave. So once I get maybe one Sedona shape on there, I'm gonna move to printing with the mask. So that's the third way of using your mask. So masking three ways. The first one's standard masking. Second one is reverse. And the third way is printing. Okay, so this one's gonna be a color contrast, so it's really gonna pop. It just makes me laugh that it looks almost, it looks like a Halloween mask. Okay, so now I'm going to paint right on the mask. Let's see, I think I want white. And we're gonna use elephant again because it was on top. So elephant paint, you have to put this on really thick, you guys. If you don't put it on thick, um, you're not gonna get a print. 
Maybe my poor kitty wasn't the best choice, but hey. I like it. Works for me. I mean, it's just a background, right? All right, so again, you're gonna get a positive image from the mask shape. Why bother printing it, though? The reason you print it is because, again, you're gonna get a different look than if you just put the, the brush straight on the on the substrate. You will always get a different look from a print. So I'm gonna press it down. And lift it. Okay, that did not work at all. Let's wipe it off and try again. I think this is too detailed of a stencil actually, or a mask. I shouldn't have done something that has eyeballs. So we're gonna switch to a circle. Love. Actually, I lied. We're not gonna switch to a circle. <laughs> this is one of my favorite masks of all time. And we're gonna print it with purple, I decided. So, I know it's gonna be hard to paint the mask. I'm gonna grab an extra tag just to take excess paint. And I'm really gonna load this mask. I want there to be enough paint on it to transfer. Do, 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 do. Sweet. Save that purple for something else. Another way to guarantee, not guarantee, but to increase the success of a, of a print from a mask is to, after you put the um, paint on it, go ahead and give it a couple of fine sprays of water. Missed it. Okay. I think we're gonna have a better print now than that poor demon kitty. Aw. I think it's hilarious. And I am going to find my rag. Just press. I like to use flower sack. Oh, look at that. Might need to save that, right? Flower sack towels. There we go. Look at that. Much better print. Sometimes when you don't have success, you do have to come back and think, was it the right color that I chose? Was it the right brush? Was it the right mask? In this case, the mask wasn't terrible until I got to the printing bit and then it really didn't work, right? So don't be afraid to re reset. A bit of reset is never a bad idea. So all I did was I wet the mask again. This time there's going to be less paint on it, so I'm not going to get as, you know, dense of an image. And then I can do it even one more time. I mean, take a look at your mask and decide if you have enough acrylic on there. And you're, you can always reload it, but I like the idea of it going strong. It's like a kitty hiding in the, hiding in the weeds or in the flowers. Nice. That one was sort of almost too wet, but that's all right. So the layers do look really cool, and that's kind of one of the points of reverse masking, is that you get these shadows of the shape uh, in different incarnations. And I just, I really like it. Let me show you some of the ones that I demoed. This has to be going on five years ago that I, we did this class. Do you guys remember? So here's one with the circle. Circle um, mask. Here's one with a heart mask. I must have grabbed, somebody might have brought that heart and I love hearts. So I was like, I'm uh, using your heart for this demo. <laughs> so you can see the different versions, regular masking, reverse masking, printing. That one's quite obvious actually. The masking three ways. Here's another one. Again, masking three ways. Regular masking here, reverse masking here with this shape, and then the dark print. 
This, by the way, is Vaseline, which we'll have to do another day. Another one. I miss those masks. I think those are long retired. So I, I say this in almost every class, but I'll mention it again. Um, Ranger kind of does what we call one and done with um, with stencils. So we order we order a chunk, and then when they're sold out, they're sold out. Here's also the same technique, you guys. When they're sold out, we just we have to decide. You know, there's always a new stencil coming down the pipe. Bottom line. So if when you see stencils that you like, grab them because their shelf life is not forever and ever and ever. All right, cool beans. <laughs> Last time I was with Diane, she was so funny. She was, goes, "Why do you keep saying cool beans?" <laughs> and I was like, "Um, why do I keep saying cool beans? Do you guys say cool beans?" I don't know. I like cool beans. You have two sets of those old masks. You need to hoard those sets. <gasps> oh my gosh. All right. So now let's go back to reduction stenciling. So this, to me, reduction stenciling is, gosh, it's what I did for like 99% of my backgrounds for a long time. Yes, Kay Vaseline. We'll do it. Um, we'll, we'll do it. It just... Yeah, it just it just requires me to prep a little bit because the Vaseline technique requires the paint to be dry. So it's not something like, anyway, I'll have to do like as seen on TV or, you know, the magic of TV. Here's one that's already dry. So I'll prep that and we, we can do that next time. Okay, so the awesome thing about reduction stenciling, which, which I know you've all done, is when you take a stencil and... You start creating a background. So this is a gloss spray um, on Jessa. And you start creating some color. And then you rub through with a baby wipe and remove it, right? Now, I want to tell you where I learned this. So years and years and years ago, I learned this from an artist named Sharon Tomlinson. And I do believe Sharon... I don't know if she's still teaching. She and Duran Mentok taught a <laughs> they taught a jewelry class. I even bought a torch for this class, uh, a butane torch, which can you imagine a torch in my hands? Do you think that's a wise choice? <laughs> I will say I never have once even cracked the package of this torch. Um, what's my point? My point is that... In fact, this is when I first learned to draw faces because Durin, or, uh, Sharon Tomlinson, her part of the class was drawing these little cool faces. And then Dorin's part of the class was putting them in a bezel, like you handmade your own bezel and um, made this amazing jewelry piece. So anyway, I, with Sharon, I watched Sharon, I watched, I watched the whole class actually and took notes, uh, then decided that... Um, I wasn't sure that jewelry making was going to be my thing, but it did get me started painting faces because I always said I couldn't do it. My first faces looked a lot like Modigliani's faces, long and narrow, um, kind of out of proportion. I know, Catherine, I, cool, no, no cool beans in the UK. Um, but what's my point? Okay, so then I, Sharon Tomlinson, in her class, she was cutting her own little stencils and then rubbing it with a baby wipe. And I'd never seen that before. And it blew my ever living mind. So anyway, that's where I learned the baby wipe technique. Okay, so let's make that a little bigger since I chose such a big stencil, right? So you, you just simply rub through with a stencil. Now what makes it fun, I think, ah, Dina, what makes it fun is when you layer and layer and layer this over and over and over again to create an interesting effect. Now, this can very easily get away from you. And, and it might get away from me today, we shall see. But what I like to do is I like to start with the initial reduction, okay? And then I do want to think about color, even though I joke all the time. You know, no thinking, only doing. You have to think about color or bad things happen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move from dark to light colors. What's interesting is um, most of the time I work light to dark. 
and you and you can do this light to dark as well actually um, but because I started so dark today I'm gonna go the other direction so now I have blackberry on there now I'm going to I'm actually gonna switch stencils just because this one is so incredibly big I always say that um, you shouldn't do too many stencil designs in one piece just because visually it gets really overwhelming but I think I'm okay with those medieval crosses those are the super size ones that came out uh, August maybe and then I'm going to use this little dot stencil okay so now this this uh purple takes up quite a big footprint my next layer needs to take up less of a footprint and you must be prepared to sacrifice some of the previous layer that's that overlap that I always talk about. If you don't overlap, it just looks like your layers are floating next to each other. Another thing that you can notice is that when I add the next layer, I'm connecting edges to edges. I don't necessarily always connect an edge to an edge, but if you want your piece to really be strongly grounded, if you do connect edges, good things will happen. So now that I have connected edge to edge here, I think I can do one down here and not connect it to the other edge, right? Because I have a strong enough connection here that it's not gonna be weird if I have a repetition down here that doesn't necessarily connect. Let's do one more because I do like my odd numbers. This doesn't work if you don't gesso. If you don't gesso, you just rub and rub and end up stirring up your paper. Okay, so there's the next layer. Yeah. And another brush. I grabbed elephant. I'm thinking I want white though. Uh, we'll use Heather. If you guys have, are making comments, I'm so bad at, at looking at them. So um, I'll try to pay attention a bit better. Okay, so now I've got the next layer to go. So the, the, the blackberry took up the biggest footprint. The next color was peacock. It's going to take up a smaller footprint. That means this layer needs to have the smallest footprint yet. Yes, you must gesso first. If you don't gesso first, yeah, it's not gonna work. I think I'm gonna even move back to this stencil just for a few shapes for repetition. So now, because I've got a lot of nice grounding going on to, for, to edges, as long as I um, overlap, some of what I've already done, I don't need to wor necessarily worry about connecting to edges, okay? Repetition is always a good idea, my friends. Repeat, 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 repeat. Choose one or two stencil designs. And, and like the reason these two work, I, in my opinion, all this can be broken, but the reason these two work in my opinion is the scale is different, right? So small scale, larger scale. So they're playing off each other nicely. They're not gonna compete with each other visually. So I'm gonna add these little medieval crosses here. With the light paint, they become really subtle. Um, is that even showing up very well? Need to do one more, right? Do, 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 do. Sweet. All right, so another technique where you end up with lots of interesting layers. So I used to teach this, like layering with the stencils over and over and over. And where I would see people go wrong are not overlapping their colors. So what I mean is, oh, by the way, Curdy, if you're watching me and you would like some stencils, I have lots of stencils and I'm happy to give you some stencils and paint so you can try this, okay? So Curdy, I'm gonna hook you up. Curdy is, 
I think, Curdy, are you eight or nine? I don't remember. So, like, this is where you can go wrong. So, like, let's say you start a layer and you're like, yay, I'm, I'm doing this reduction layering technique. So then there's the first layer. And then the next layer you come back and you just float it somewhere. It, it I can't even, I can't even, <laughs> I can't even not, oh, Curdy's nine. Curdy, I'm going to give you some stencils. Is that cool? I've got so many. I'm going to give you some. Um, my bottom line is, I see how I, I still put that on an edge? Oh, I can't float a layer. It's just so hard. Anyway, but by because I didn't overlap them, they're going to have a separate story. But if I would have overlapped them a little stronger, they would, it, you know, it would make more sense visually. So I'm going to overlap them with this color. And then that will help. Okay, so this takes reduction stenciling to, you know, a heavily layered level, which, which is really, really fun to play with. All right, should we do one more? For your tag book? All right, let us see. Oh, let's do thick and thin. So another one of my absolute favorite methods for my, for my paint, for any paint really, is what I like to call thick and thin. So I like to start with really wet, thin layers. I'm going to remove some of this um, so I can use the tag because the tag is gessoed and I don't think I have another gesso tag. So I'm going to show this who's boss and we are going to have a purple background. Oh, you know what else um, removes paint? Rubbing alcohol. Now, good luck finding rubbing alcohol. I actually have some in this studio. La la la, because I don't use it for a medical use. I use it for art. So I'm just going to let that rubbing alcohol sit on that for a second. See how it's getting rid of that paint? And then I'm going to rub it, not with a baby wipe, but with my towel. Look at that. It's almost like another technique, right? We're going to call that, and that was thick on there, you guys. You know what? There's no way we're going to be able to use this tag for my point for what I was planning. But hey, now we have uh, a grunge technique. Alcohol removal. <laughs> Isn't that cool? You know what I would totally do with that? I would find the stencil that matches it. Oh my gosh, you guys. I need somebody to come here and be my handler. Find the stencil that matches it. And put the positive shape on there to repeat it. I'm using the color that's already on my desk. A lot of the decisions that I make when I create art, I really do make because that's the color on top or that's the color on my desk. It's just easier for me. Years ago, Rebecca Sauer wrote a book, a scrapbooking book. I probably still have it somewhere. And in that book, she said, there is no perfect green card stock. And I, that kind of changed my life because I thought, you're right, I spend hours digging like for the perfect shade of green cardstock when just choose green, you know, it doesn't matter. All right, so that's, I think that's usable. I, I like how the paint from the purple removed according to the brush stroke of the gesso. And isn't that cool? I think that's kind of funky cool. All right, so hey, that's a fun little technique. Let's just grab another tag. We're not gonna gesso this one. Just because I don't want to. I don't want to. La la la. Okay. So everything today is going to be purple and peacock and ocean, apparently, because that's the colors that are out. So one of my favorite things to do is wet, loose layers of color and then contrasted with a nice, 
thick stripe. So one of the things I love, love, love about um, any of the paints Ranger makes is the pigment load in them is so incredibly high that you can um, thin them down without really losing a lot of pigment integrity. I mean, eventually you can get them to break, but for the most part, um, I mean, look, you can, you can make the acrylics look like watercolor. I'm sure that's true for Diane's as well. Um, cause Ranger just makes a great paint. They really, really do. And so I'm, I'm, I'm taking the colors that are on my desk. I'm dipping my brush in a lot of water. You could even take your, your spray bottle and add water that way. Sorry, I can't stop messing with that one. I'm going to speckle it just because I feel like it. All right. I'm going to just pound my brush down just to get some interesting flow. And people, this is why my sewing machine has paint on it and my wall and my television <laughs> and my cell phone. Okay. So I like that. I love what happens when you start using the paint. So loosey goosey. One more color. Do you guys think cheddar? I'm literally digging through my box to find cheddar. I found it. Okay. Little bit. Uh, oh, you know what? We're going to do cheddar for the thick stripe, not the thin stripe. Let's use a lighter turquoise as well. So cheddar is gonna be our thick addition. Remember said I like to I said I like to combine them thick and thin. Okay. So I think in the tag book I called this loose flowy layers. <laughs> flowy. <laughs> flowy. That's real advanced uh, art teaching here. You have a faintly speckled bathroom wall. Good woman. All right. So clean the brush a tad. Add some water. Loosen that paint up. I just, I love, love, love. This is, I love the way that this dries when it looks like this. Um, a lot of the drawings that I do like with the Stabilo pencil or rubber stamping right over this or collage, I do on backgrounds that I have um, done this exact thing with. I'm trying to see if I can find you some examples. So these are all pages that I ripped out of my journals. So can you see that flowy background? Doesn't that make perfect sense? Now, you know, now that you see me do that, it's not too difficult, is it? Um, I love, love, love a flowy background. Some of these are not too flowy though. Oh, here's one of my favorites of all time. Okay, cool beans. So while that is still wet, I'm now gonna take my finger and glob up a massive amount of cheddar. And cheddar, orange and purple make, Mud. So yellow and purple are opposite on the color wheel, but orange and yellow <laughs> are pretty close on the color wheel. So anything that's opposite will mud out and anything that's almost opposite will still mud out. Well, cheddar is a yellow orange. So yeah, it, this really, really will brown out. So that's why I'm not gonna um, add this in, in a nice loose layer here, but I am just gonna wipe it on thick with my finger. Keep it really, really thick. And so this, this is fun because you can use the qualities of the paint on the same piece in different ways. So I, would, I am going to let that 100% dry just the way that is. I, I'm going to like the th loose layers back there and the thick, thick stripe. I know brown is a color... I know, I know brown's a color. It's just when you don't mean to make brown, when, uh, then it's a big bummer, right? Okay, let's see if I can jam another tag in. I just think it's so funny that we got this bonus tag. 
Don't you think that's cool? I'm kind of in love with it. All right, let's do alcohol flick as well. So remember we rubbed this earlier? That sounded really weird. Please don't take that out of context. <laughs> we uh, reduction stenciling here, right? And what I'm going to do now, and that's dry, so that's what you want. You want, uh, you know, kind of a layer of paint to be dry. It doesn't have to be rubbed with a stencil. It just has to be dry. And then I'm going to take a, a nice wet brush, and I'm going to take a darker color, and I'm actually going to do a wash of color over what we just did. And you're like, no. Or you might be like, yes. <laughs> Uh, what I want to do is I would need this to dry about 50% of the way. I actually want it to be a tad darker, believe it or not. So I, I taught this technique in the UK. Um, without Before I got there, I didn't realize that they're not allowed to buy rubbing alcohol over the counter. It's restricted. So we had to use hand sanitizer and it worked. But the room did, I mean, the room really did smell very hospital, I will say. Hi from Grants Pass, Travis, good to see you. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry for a second. Um, let me scroll, any, any uh, questions? You cannot get yourself to love cheddar. Carissa, I might have to unfriend you. I'm just kidding. We all love, um, we all have our own color story, so. Hey, you don't have to steal the splattering. Just do it, girl. There's no stealing. It's all <laughs> so technical. So I'm I, while this dries halfway, I'm scrolling back to look at um, look at your comments and see if you have any questions that I missed. Because I'm really attention deficit. Oh, squirrel! I really want this to get done. So there is a learning curve for how dry this needs to be. Uh, and you'll figure it out if you if you do this while it's too wet all of your speckles will go away. And I guess technically you could lightly blot it. You just don't want to, you know, get too, too rid of that, 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 uh, wet layer. Okay. You can buy rubbing alcohol online in the UK. It's expensive. Oh, interesting. All right, so I think it's getting close. The nice thing too is if you do this and it doesn't work, give it the wash again and try again. All right, so now, and this is the surest way to find out whether or not you have a paper cut. I'm going to just flick the rubbing alcohol onto my fingers and I'm gonna flick it down. Can you see it changing? gives you this kind of interesting look. I do think mine was still dry, or still too, still too wet, don't you think? All right, let's do it again. Let's do it with night. So here's how I know it was too wet. My droplets didn't stay as droplets, and they had just merged into the puddle. It still looks cool. Yeah, the bottle is rubbing alcohol. And it doesn't matter which kind, like um, this is 70%. People, are, people have asked me if it matters if it's 70% or whatever. I, I haven't found a difference. All right, so let's try again. I'm going to, here, I'm gonna try not to make it so wet. I'm gonna take my mini blending tool. I'm gonna add a little water to it. I'm gonna pick up some night and let's try applying the night this way. See if I can not have to wait so long. So I have a million ways to fix things. I actually was writing, I have two pages of lists of writing lists of ideas for um, new online class. And I think all my ways of fixing things would be a fun class. Now that, oh yeah, it's working. Oop. Better, better, better. It almost looks like snake skin. Can you guys see that? Yeah, night is the best color. I need night and white to come in gallon size. Seriously. Isn't that cool? So here it turned 
I had too much alcohol, so it kind of formed into one giant puddle. But look how cool that is. Okay, so that was speckling. You can actually get this effect with water. It's a little trickier with water. So with water, you need to let it dry about 75% of the way. And then you can flick with water. Um, it's not quite as pronounced, I will say. So, uh, but try it if you, if you don't have rubbing alcohol or you don't want to use the rubbing alcohol. Um, the rubbing alcohol, like I said before, though, it's a little bit of insurance. So if you, you know, really don't like something, you really can kind of fix it with rubbing alcohol if it if it's already dried. If you gessoed and it's not dry, you can fix it with a baby wipe. All right. I think everything, let's do one more. Let's do Scrafito. So Scrafito, what kind of paint did you put down? Um, it was, it was uh, just my night acrylic, thin, thin uh, layers of night acrylic. Okay, Scrafito is fun. Oh, let's use this. So like, let's say you've got a hot mess going on. These are um, tags from yesterday that I blotted. I don't know if you remember these. And Scrafito, and I had folded them in half to maybe make a book out of them, but you know. All right, so Scrafito is when you come back and you put a nice thick layer of paint cover it all. This is like um, scratch board from when you were a little kid. And I'll show you the practical use for this here in a second because, you know, it's one thing to make a tag and it's one thing to actually do this on a page. So I'll show you how I, I will use this actually in real work here in, in just one second. So you're going to put a nice thick layer of paint right on the acrylic. So the gloss spray will work fine. The acrylic will work fine. I know that I had one of these Ranger scraper thingy bings. I, I'm so great at knowing the official names of things. It's just fantastic. Anyway, so while while your paint is wet, you of course scrape through. That's what scrafito means. It means scraping through one layer to reveal the layer underneath. So that's why that layer underneath needs to be uh, lots of acrylic paint or gloss spray. Um, and it gives you that scratch board look from back in the day when they, when your art teachers would give you a little piece of scratch board and then you would like create a lion or something like that in there. So, how, you know, would I make a whole background like that? I probably wouldn't make a massive background like that, though I have to say I'm kind of digging that one. I mean, that would be cool as an entire background, I, I will say. Let me grab a journal, though. All right, so this is blue journal here. I have so much paint floating around. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. All right, so like, let's say I get to a page, and I want to add... Okay, we're going to do it on this one. And I want to add some scrafito elements. So... There's already acrylic down there, there's already spray, and I just want to add a Scrafito accent. I will generally turn to a neutral color. So I'm grabbing Elephant because it is right by my hand. And you can paint it on with a brush. I'm gonna um, just scrape areas of elephant. Okay, so there's one. Is it showing up? I like to do things in odd numbers. Two. So again, this is just going to be a textural addition, a textural element. And three. All right, then you want to use something to scrape into that paint to reveal what's underneath. And the the Ranger combs are really good. I think you can still get those large paint combs of mine, which are one of my most used tools on the planet. Um, you can just use the end of a paintbrush. And because my paint has this delicious heavy body, it will, of course, hold your mark.
So it's, it's just a way of creating a top textural element on your work that, that, that adds some visual interest, if that makes sense. Here is another way to use that Sgraffito technique in your work. Everybody clear on that one? All right, another journal here. Let's just see what we can find. La, 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 la. So let's say you have a page and let's do her. Let's say you want some Sgraffito elements. Another way to do it is to take a tag. So I'm going to take this little, this was on my desk and I used it to blot and then it looks like <laughs> Uh, it also has overspray. Just remember those gloss sprays will get absolutely everywhere. They just will. And you're going to be like, sweet, that got everywhere. And it's not going to matter, right? Hey, another reason to have alcohol in your studio, and I don't mean vodka, rubbing alcohol, is uh, it takes the gloss spray and the acrylic paint off your fingernails and off your cell phone. All right, so I'm putting white paint on my craft sheet. I'm going to put a thick coat of paint. Again, there's a learning curve for how thick to make it. So, you know, if it turns out bad, wipe it off and try it again, right? No, no worries. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and make marks. Ooh, hello. Right in this graffito on the tag. See that? And now I'm going to print this graffito onto my page. Oop, dang it. You know what I did? I slid it. Do over. I slid it. Don't do that. Oops, so well. If it would have looked okay, I would have just not worried about it. But it did look like a, somebody wiped their nose there. All right. Try again. Don't. Slide it. So you're, you're going to get a print of your Sgraffito. One of my favorite things is circles. I don't know why I did squares today. Um, let's do some cheddar circles. So if you guys have any questions about the techniques we did today, let me know. I probably didn't see them as they floated around through. Um, I can go back and look. And I'm happy to do that. All right, so again, Sgraffito, this time a circle. Oh, I slid it again, you guys. It's time to give up for the day. There we go, better, eh? Barely. Ha oh, ha, that looks good. Cool. Okay, so it's just going to give you a print of your Sgraffito for a textural element. Okay, so happy creating. Start yourself a little acrylic tag book. Um, not tomorrow, but other days we will add more tag techniques to the book too. Okay, to what? Uh, no, I slid it. I mean, it would have just, it would have worked if I weren't well, an idiot. See how this is like at the end of the journal too and the page has a curve to it. So I put it on and it would kind of slide down. Yeah, I, we can do flip throughs. A lot of these journals are um, class journals though. But yeah, happy to do that. And yes, please rewatch. Also yesterday I figured out how to save the live and put it on YouTube and then also put it on my blog. So if you find me on YouTube and then find my or and or find my blog you guys can re-watch any of these so they'll be there i just found out alcohol has a use by date <laughs> you know what i don't think it would affect it i mean i wonder if they do that just because the law says you have to put use by dates on things now i don't know i never knew such a thing i would keep using it why not Okay, bye everybody.